there's a uh, filter. There's a filter for that. And so, by the way, this is local social podcast number number seven. Number seven. So yeah, because we took, local we took social about a, pub took podcast hiatus. number seven, and we're coming off of Pravadacon two, and Jeremy's releasing his cigar, and there's a whole bunch of funny stories that we we're probably going to get into uh, that happened at Pravadacon, uh, which was two weekends ago. And then there's also some future stuff. And we're going to be talking about business. We're, we're actually going to like not completely structure our deal like right here on camera, but like we're gonna, yeah. we're fine tuning some things. And, and, and I think that's important, too, for you guys to be a part of that process because it's really transparent. And I believe that that is the future of business just to a large degree is like really just, you know, I. I used to think when I left the music business, I had this idea, Jeremy. This is when I think that website or the the app, um, what was the one where you videotaped yourself all the time? It was like basically just all lives. It was something that you look through in a submarine. Periscope. What? Okay, do you remember Periscope? No. I mean, okay, I, the per- name sounds familiar, but I don't remember yeah. it very well. Okay, I believe, if I'm remembering it correctly, Periscope was just basically all lives. That's all it was. Okay? Okay. So you hopped on there and you started a live and people watched you. There was a lot of weird shit in the beginning and then it got kind of tame and then it just, <laughs> it just, it just, yeah, it just well, fell dude, out. I didn't, I didn't realize this the other day. Did you know that OnlyFans started off as like not a porn no, thing? No. In fact, in fact, they've canceled it. It's. They've canceled all the pornography, from what I understand. They won't. oh, have they? Because it started. Because yeah. I was I was talking about the other day to to Rockwell. We were talking about a way because I was like, man, it'd be nice if I had a place to put my videos and maybe I could do extra content or content that I'm afraid to put because all these social media platforms are so restrictive these days, right? You can't talk about cigars. You can't talk about guns. You can't talk about this. You can't. If you misgender somebody or dead name somebody, they're getting you're getting in trouble. Like it's fucking ridiculous. So I was like, I would love to have a place that I had all my shit that I owned that nobody had control of, right? And he's like, Well, you know, that's how OnlyFans started out, right? Is it was like supposed to be for, you know, you paid because I was like, you know, you could, I know some creators that like um the Hodge twins and stuff, and they uh-huh. put all their stuff behind a paywall. And you only pay a two or three dollars a month. It's a low entry fee, but it's two or three dollars a month, and they have all their videos that that they can't put on YouTube and stuff on that, or they used to. I don't know if they're still doing it. And he's like, "Yeah, dude, that's what OnlyFans was for." I'm like, "Dude, OnlyFans is like chicks showing their buttholes." And he's like, "No, dude, OnlyFans is like it's started out is for people's like fans, like their fan base. It was like a paywall and you could go and you got special content. They housed all your videos. There's no restrictions like there is on YouTube and stuff. He's like, and then quickly the porn stars figured out they could shoot their buttholes on there and get paid for it. And so it, the so porn let me over. pause you. Let me, let me, let me, let me pause you right there. Right. Because yeah, there's yeah. this thing, there's this thing that I think about often in business is like, it's like a business has a life cycle or like, and then, And then aside from just like a life cycle of its own, uh, a utility than the internet, let's say, right? Like, in in other words, if the internet were a company, it probably wouldn't have worked out. And here's why. (laughs) Companies are selling. They're looking for a payday way too quickly, way too early in the process. And, you know, God bless them. We all want to get paid. I, I get it. I, I'm not I'm not here to knock people. For, uh, you know, we're going to start like in rap. It used to be like you, you just sell out kind of, you know. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but but I did say this thing today. Peter Thiel says the only time a business owner should sell their company is when they're out of ideas that can move it forward. OK, so. Right. So there's something to be said about that. And then the other thing is, is but think about this. So the Internet starts just like this company you're mentioning, OnlyFans, right? It starts, maybe it has good intentions in the beginning. It immediately, human nature, you know, dissolves that into <laughs> pornography, which is what we do, which is, by the way, without pornography, the internet would not be here. It would not be here. It was like at one point, like 70% of all internet traffic was pornography. People don't realize that. Okay? <laughs> that so, so fucking crazy. So, so imagine if, if the internet was a privately owned company, right? They would sell right there. People would, holy shit, this is hot. I'll give you a billion dollars for it. They'd sell. That company would destroy it like they do with most other things or turn it into something else. And then boom. You, right. like, so so this OnlyFans, like, to, like, 
it's it's really interesting to watch something like that happen because it has the potential to be something really beautiful, even though it has this thing in its history of it did turn into like yeah, a dude, porn site. It, it kind of it kind of it's going to take a lot of rebranding and stuff and unprogramming for people to not think of OnlyFans as just girls getting paid to show their buttholes. Because I mean, honestly, that's the porn industry took over and if somebody says hey go to my only fans they're expecting nudity like they're expecting it to be honorary right like they're not expecting to go and see behind the scenes footage of like you shooting a fucking cooking video they're expecting to see somebody fucking didn't, didn't these cookies come out great and here's my asshole <laughs> yeah, exactly. look at these chocolate chip cookies how much they look like my starfish you know what i mean it's like it's like i mean it's yeah i mean it, the porn industry has taken that over, and if if they've gotten rid of that, they're going to have to figure out a way to do some major reprogramming. Of- have they gotten rid of that? Why do you say no? They did make an announcement at some. They tried to. They, they yeah, they've tried to, and they're probably their business model failed immediately because ninety nine point nine percent of the shit that's on there is porn. How empowering is it? I would feel. It's the one site that has something to do with pornography that I would feel very proud to own because how empowering is it that this woman no longer has to go out into the streets of, you know, Los Angeles or Miami, answer uh-huh. these these cattle calls for porn where you probably have to blow somebody to get the job, right? <laughs> Not then, somebody, and, probably five somebodies. Yeah, and, and then and then by the way, these women are doing things that are terrible on, on like I, I mean, I'm not judging them and I, and I don't want to be judgmental, but like there's stuff that you wouldn't want a, a relative to do and they're only getting no. paid off. You find out they're only getting paid like 1500 bucks. It's like, my, honey, you could it's make like, that. Like, it's like, yo, you're going to have mental scarring. Your fucking psychiatry bills are going to cost more than 1500 bucks after what they just did to you for love of God. Like, that's horrible. Some people are into it, though, man. Some people, they're, I mean, they love it. You know what I mean? Some of those girls, they don't look at it as... Like they can't believe they're getting paid to do something they 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 want to do anyway. They're like, yeah, sure, I'll blow a dude for fifteen hundred bucks. I'd have done it for free. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, oh. I, it's a weird industry, and I don't make judgments about it because you know, to each their own. Whatever people yeah. choose to do with their life is, yeah, yeah, is their sure. their business. Um, it's definitely a strange industry. Some people feel very empowered by it, like you said, and, and other people feel like it's a demeaning thing and. I don't know. I guess it just depends on your angle, man. Because, you know, you do. You have some women that are very feminist type women that look at it like demeaning to women and they really hate it. And then you got other women. They're like, no, it's empowering because I'm making it's money doing what I want to do. It's, it's not empowering. It sets them back as far as the woman's rights movement and, and the equal. It sets them back. I'm sorry. It does. I mean, sure. You, but you what I'm saying is one, arguments on both sides, right? Yeah. And I mean, I don't, don't want to get graphic, but it's like you have this whole like you know, uh, empowered women's movement and, you know, all props to them. And then it's like, you know, you're, oh, yeah, I support that. And then you're going to go watch some girl getting gags, you know, by three, <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's, uh, these two things are, it's, it's like, a lot. So, Dude, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. And why is porn but, but, so violent? When I was younger, they were having sex on camera. Uh, maybe, yeah, anal, maybe anal scenes were uncomfortable for, for a woman. Here right. Uh, oh, but for all intents and purposes, it seemed as though everyone was enjoying themselves. Yeah, dude. Now it really, it has gotten to where it's like, oh, this is almost hard to watch, bro. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Like, is are, you feel is guilty? That you feel guilty. Like, you feel guilty for watching some of this stuff. Yeah, you look at you like, oh, I, I. Well, and you know, honestly, not to sound like some puritanical fucking idiot, because I mean, I'm by are not i mean you know me i am probably the worst person to this is like don't throw stones if you live in a glass house statement right here but i feel like some of the young kids growing up if you know we didn't have access to that stuff growing up right like you were lucky if you found one of your dad's playboys or something right we didn't have 24 hour access to limitless amounts of just extremely graphic pornography and i can't help but think that it's harmful to their mental development sexually because, I mean, dude, if, you know, you're learning and you're young and you're out there exploring the internet and you th- and you find some of this stuff and you think this is how sex between a man and a woman is supposed to be and you see some girl just getting 
destroyed. I mean, doesn't that just kind of, I don't know, that's got to fuck your, like, yeah, thought dude, process up Stop right there. Stop right there. There's two, two, two stories here. One is you are 100% correct. I don't give a shit what anyone says, okay? Yeah. 100% correct. I wish I, I, the one, uh, uh, you know, you, you, I don't have regrets, but one thing that I wish I could have done was not seen pornography before the first time I, I had sex with someone. Uh, right. not watched, not watched as much pornography growing up. We had access to porn. Parents tapes were around and we had them, which leads me to me and my boy, Chris would find tapes. We'd watch them. We could handle it. We played it for one of our friends and he got like fucked up from it. Like he, he really like, Oh yeah. He, first of all, we had to talk, like talk to him for like a couple of days. Like, please don't tell your parents. Please don't tell you. You know, we were. Why did it fuck him up? We were like 11 or 12 or 13. So probably, tw- no, it would be like 11, 12. Probably and, 12, and- 13, I would imagine. And that's about, if I'm remembering correctly, the age that I started. Like, my dad never had any of that kind of stuff around the house, but friends did. And, you know, their dads give you Playboys or whatever. I don't think I got a hold of any like pornography till I was probably in my mid to late teens. So it's just what I mean. There was there's magazines, but the the tapes just weren't as is. It wasn't yeah. like today where you can just go on the internet and just you know what I mean. So there's he, he he got totally screwed up from it. And you know what? My dad ran my dad ran into him twenty five years later, and <laughs> and he said I, I, and he he made mention of it. He was like that that really fucked me up. Re- and see, I don't. <laughs> I'm going to make a statement, and I don't mean to sound harsh when I say this. How do I say this without sounding harsh? I th- I think ultimately my stance on pornography is pictures are fine. Video. I could see where people. Oh, I know what I was going to say. I know what I was in the middle of saying when my camera had a seizure is because I was saying I don't want this to come across harsh because I'm really not trying to be judgmental or mean when I say this. But some people are just weak minded. Right, like, oh, dude, and I don't mean that. That, that's, that's what, fucked up. <laughs> that's fucked up. No, I, how about it, some people are sensitive to images? Like that, that, that same person well, could just hear. In general, no, but like with everything, right? Like, okay, for and when I say weak minded, that's why I said I'm. I'm really trying not. That sounds really harsh, and I don't. I can't think of a better way. I'm not trying to be judgmental or mean and calling them weak or pussies or anything like that. I'm yeah. just saying some people. Don't have I me. Mean, okay, maybe this is a better way to put it. Some people don't have a lot of mental fortitude. Maybe that's, I don't know. My point is, some people are affected by things way easier than others, right? Like you watch the porn, no harm, no foul. No harm. Your buddy watches it, it like spirals him off. Some people go to war, see horrible shit. They come home, they're fine. Other people go to war, see horrible shit. They come home, they're fucked up the rest of their life. Have you, I'm not have, judging those people. Or, have you ever had. Have you ever seen something or had an image get stuck in your head that made you uncomfortable and you didn't want to think about, but you thought about it often? I mean, I've, I've definitely seen fucked up shit that like I thought about and it took me a minute to get out of my head, but nothing that made me like freak out. There was, there was a video that I watched. um, uh, I I see people die in front of me, like graphically. And it was like, oh Jesus! And it, but it, I mean, I I was fine. Like the next real day. life is different. Real life for me is different than things I see on things I see online. Uh, uh, sometimes can affect, particularly violence. I, I do not like seeing. Um, I watched the video one time where a guy got beat up real bad. I think I spoke about this like in our first uh, in our first pod. Um, yeah, and and he was unconscious, and uh, basically the guy was yeah. jumping on his head, and I, yeah. You know, we, I remember I you still, telling that story. I still think about that, man. It bothers yeah. me. I hate that. I went back and made myself watch it over and over and over again to like, basically like uh, get the- Try to do the, like, um, what do they call it? Uh, exposure desens- therapy? De- yeah, desensitize myself to it. And it worked to a, to a degree, but I still think about it. It bothers me the human beings are so fucked up that they would want to inflict. I- I'd rather see someone get shot in the head than see someone unconsciously- and then still being beaten. No, in the head, I like, mean a hundred percent. I've seen plenty of stuff that's hard for me to watch, and I don't enjoy watching it, and it bothers me. But I just have a a way of categorize. And me and my wife talked about this before. I process it, categorize it, file it, and move on. 
Like I don't. That's all. Awesome. That's very healthy. That's very cool. I very don't healthy. Get, you would I make a better a up. better medic or cop than I would. Um, but although although I'd be the best detective that ever walked. <laughs> but and that's why I said I didn't want to come across as being insulting to people that aren't like that. Like some people, they see fucked up shit and it, and it gets to them, and that's that's fine. I'm not judging people for that. I was just making the statement that there are different types of people, right? Yeah. There are some people that for some reason. Shit gets in their head and it will wear them fucking out. And other people can process it, categorize it, file it, move on. You know what so I mean? Do you and, know? Do you know why you're you're able to to do that? No, I know. No clue. I, I, I have, I have an idea. I'm I don't. I'm not in. <laughs> I, I'm not in your head, but I can tell you from studying OCD thoughts. Okay. Okay. Um, because when I when I when I was heavy into drugs and alcohol, uh, I would have OCD thoughts, things that I couldn't, uh, things that I couldn't stop thinking about uncontrollably, right. uh, uh-huh. fearful shit. Okay. That's from the imbalance that the drugs and alcohol create. Okay. So, but what, here's the difference you don't, and Oh, most people out in the street that are totally fucked up, they have a, a problem already. There's no doubt, but the drugs make it so much more worse. You you ha- you you have these moments of euphoria that get you out of that, and then and then you you have days of being tweaked out and totally fucked up. And they're if they were sober, they'd be so much more sane of looking and sounding. Anyway, here's my thing: is um you are able to to disassociate with thoughts. You could have a crazy thought, and you would say either laugh at it or say that was fucked up and just move right along, right? A hundred percent. That's a healthy mind. That is a healthy way of looking at thought. The unhealthy way, which creates OCD is, so the way it was explained to me is that your thoughts are a stream. It's like an actual stream. And think of your thoughts as little twigs in this stream. And so what happens Uh is once in a while, one of these twigs come by and it really gets your attention and you can't let it go. And so you grab onto Uh this thing and you stay with it and it fucks you up. So you have to remember that even the most- your most bizarre thoughts, your most crazy shit. That's not you, bro. That's this is a garbage dump of everything you've seen, heard, watched on television, and and, and ideas right. coming through the ethos that are just floating around. It's almost like radio signals. Well, and and th- and that's what I mean by when I was saying earlier by some people, I, and I don't know, and maybe weak minded was a bad way to say it because it does come across as me being like negative about it, and I really wasn't trying to be that way. But yeah, some people just, it, they, and that's a good visual image. The stick comes by and they just, they can't let go of the stick, man. And other people can't. It's a perfect example of like, and I don't think they still, and they've done a lot of testing on this, and I still don't think they understand why some guys go to war and see horrible graphic shit and they're able to come home and deal with it, right? I'm sure they have some intr- intrusive thoughts at times, and I'm sure they're not perfect because anytime you see that kind of horrible stuff they see, it's going to fuck you up a little bit. But they're able to, for the most part, assimilate, process it, and move on. And then other guys see sometimes less bad stuff and yeah. more. Maybe they're not as an active of a troop or whatever, and they come back and they've got extreme PTSD, and they've got a lot of problems, and... I don't think they've ever really figured out the mechanism of why that is. Like, what is it? Is it brain chemistry? Is it maybe they've had more concussions and there's something? Because I know they've they've done a lot of studies that show like traumatic stress to your brain, like concussions and stuff cause a lot of issues. So, I mean, is it something physical that's going on? Is it a chemical imbalance? Like, why is it that some people have horrible PTSD that's crippling and other people seem to be fine i i I mean it's the same thing it's like why are some people serious and some people have a great sense of humor right some people just take life really serious the more serious you take it the more dramatic it will be and the more hurtful it can be uh you know uh i like to try to have a great sense of humor i'm also very sensitive to things but then i have a great sense of humor and a great way of letting it roll off like so right um, you know you you, you, yeah i i think for some people that are sensitive to things yeah, it's really hard for them to let go. But I also think that they're not given the tools to think about it in the way that we just described it, to know that, hey, you're not your thought. There's a lot of people out there that think they are their thoughts, that you are your oh, thoughts. Oh, dude, if I, some of the fucked up shit that comes through my head, if I thought that was me, <laughs> man, 
now now you see, you wa- just said I'd it. I'm on a watch list somewhere, bro, you, for you sure. You just said it. You just said it. Uh, that is the that is that is a large portion of mental illness in the, in the world. Yeah, is people I mean, but just because you think it. The difference is what you do, right? Like that's the difference. Now, if you think those horrible thoughts and you can't control your actions and you act on those horrible thoughts, then that's what makes you a fucking bad person or a serial killer. But I mean. Dude, I have some fucked up thoughts that pop into my head, and I can't control that. It doesn't mean I, I dwell on it, or I agree with it, or I'm going to act on it. But it pops in there, and you're like, "Huh, that that was a fucked up thought. <laughs> Why is yeah. that in?" That's like that's like sometimes I'll be driving along in the woods, and I'll be like, "That'd be a good place to hide a body." You know what I mean? That doesn't mean I'm going to really do it. <laughs> I don't know why that popped in there. I think of the you know craziest shit, dude. The craziest thoughts go through me. I'm like, I just shit. And yeah, if you take it seriously, it's like, oh my god, why would I think that? Well, you're not really thinking that. It's your your mind is idle in those moments, and and it's just a computer that's got data constantly going through it, man. That's that's right. the way I look at it. And, and I also do you, believe that there are things in the ethos. I do believe that trends trends. Yeah, a lot of trends are business people trying to make products that sell. But the whole first half of that trend, that thing that made it a trend, those were really creative people out there or people out there that were just in tune with something that was going on. And so you'll see it. It's in Japan is into something at the same time America is like there's two guys in both countries that are really into this thing and it starts to grow. And it's not that they bid off each other. that reminds me, and that's a funny talking point about creativity in general. It's such a weird thing because where does shit come from? Because I know sometimes I'll be struggling on a video idea or an edit or how to make this particular subject a little more creative or fun or whatever. And it's just not happening, dude. It's just, I can't. It's, and then all of a sudden, something just, it's like it pops out of the air. It's just like, poof. and then all of a sudden, you get an idea and then you, once that flow starts, then all of a sudden that idea springs another idea and you're like, oh yeah, I could do this. I could do that. But it's like creativity in general, man, it's an interesting thing. Cause where does it come from? You know I'll what I mean? I'll tell you where it, it comes it, from. It, it's like it, it comes, comes from the ethos or something. It, it, it's it's it weird. Does, it, it does. And that's why when people say, oh, I'm not, uh, I'm not creative. No, no, no. You're not open to being creative. You don't right. view yourself as being creative. Everyone can be creative. Uh, also, uh, all the great art in the world was inspired by something else. And in 100%. Most, great, most great artists have some form of imposter syndrome because they've been heavily influenced by other art. Bro, you can't not take inspiration from things. So it's that's just a way to... So, so you have to accept that, that a lot of your art is going to be inspired by other art. Okay, because I look at 100%. art as a... As a uh, um, it's a snow, It's a big snowball and it keeps rolling downhill. You can reach into the middle and grab some of that classic shit, but that shit is classic because it was first, right? Right. And so you can keep reaching in and borrowing. That's why you see, oh, everyone's dressing like it's the 90s now, but it's new. There's a different way of, because, you know, when you save those clothes from the actual, although that's not the case right now, people are wearing that shit, but I'm just saying like, but it's with a modern twist. And so you can always reach back in to borrow ideas, but the outside that shell is constantly picking up and it's picking up after itself. Like it's this guy did that. I'm going to do this. And and it just keeps snowballing until, you know, you have a hundred years of fucking people like creative people borrowing ideas from each other until it becomes something totally different. Well, you know, it's, it's funny. They, I forgot and I'm going to totally butcher this, but, and I don't remember where I heard it or what, but they were saying that basically any new art or style or anything starts off with if you're fresh into the space, right? Like you're a new painter, you're a new video editor, you're a new artist of whatever, sculptor, whatever. It almost always starts with you directly copying somebody, like directly copying somebody's shit. You're interested in it. You like it. It inspires you and you're copying exactly. And then as you evolve as an artist, apprentice. you start That's to the put your own mode. spin on that art. Huh? Apprentice mode. Right. And then as you develop as an artist, you start to have your own style that is still strongly influenced by that, but you start to put your own vibe, your own tweaks into it. 
and then it eventually comes something different. But everybody starts out ripping something directly off because you're you're not there yet. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Look, I ripped off a bunch of stuff uh, with like, you know, the pop art stuff. And now it's turned into some of our own unique characters like that's dude i love that, that that you guys do that stuff i was thinking about that just the other day i was looking at Thank some you. of your cigar bands and stuff some of the stuff you guys do and i'm like man they go totally different than the the, the classical <laughs> expectation right yeah. they're leaning into pop culture and yeah. and just a very different vibe than that super classical yeah like you know a, a very classical cigar band has a lot of like classic art on it you know there's like this almost da vinci looking shit on it you know with like a lot of gold, fancy filigree and all this stuff. And it's very classical art looking stuff. You know, you guys got like fucking uh, Dr. Seuss on there flipping you off or some crazy <laughs> shit. You know, it's, it's like, it's yeah. you're doing your own thing. And I, I, yeah. Yeah. For I sure, did. man. I appreciate that. Um, and so my new thing is, is, is fusing the two. So I'll go like, we, I have this whole series of Cuban bands. They look exactly like the original bands from Cuba. But then on the uh-huh. back, they're clo- enclosed with a character that we created, like some. You know, oh, nice, movie. nice. Yeah, so so that that's cool. Um, let's talk about oh, your cigar, but, man. Yeah, I was about to say shifting into that because we need to get on the planning portion, or we're not going to get to it. Because I know you got about you can deal with me for about an hour, and then you're done. That's You've had true. enough, Jeremy, for the day. <laughs> that's not true. Okay, Paradicon, so- you were like, oh, dude, this is multiple hours of Jeremy. I don't know if I could handle much more. of this. <laughs> I, for Vodacon, I was like, holy shit, Jerry's here all fucking day. It's amazing. Everyone was so Dude, happy. I was there. I was there almost two. I, I was there a little late on the first day but because we got held up in traffic. But um, let's talk about Provodicon real quick before we, we get into the cigar because we can leave that on. I'm so, I'm so, you legitimized Provodicon. You made it awesome. Thank you. Oh, stop it. Fucking stop it. I will say I was surprised at how many people there were like pumped to see me and wanted pictures and stuff like that. Cause I've gone to like expos and, and stuff like blade show. And you know, there's 15, 20 people that stop me and want a selfie or whatever. But at Provoticon, it was like 90% of the audience. Right. Uh, yeah. It was awesome though, because yeah. I'm happy that there is a place that has that many people that are fans of the channel that I can go and get some FaceTime with a lot of people in one hit. You know what I mean? That's it's like my crowd, obviously. And, right? and by the way, you're, my you're, crowd, it's your people, but I mean, it's 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 my group of people that like that kind of stuff. And and, and next Pravadacon, uh, we should talk about that because uh, maybe we should have a, a, a sire situation there because it's all set up. All the work will be done for you. You just get to show up and shake hands. You know what I mean? Yeah, dude. I also need to. I I didn't think about it because I didn't know what to expect. This was the first Provodicon I had been yeah. to. I didn't know. This is our only year, number bring, two. I, next year, I will bring some stuff to do some giveaways with and stuff. I'll bring some of my merch and some of my ashtrays and my cigar scissors and stuff, and we'll do some giveaways or we'll raffle it off for charity or, or, or do, you know, do something. Uh, I'm not interested in selling anything there to make any money for myself, but certainly to give back to the fans, do some either just – playing giveaways or to raise money for charity we can do some raffles or something with some gear yeah yeah okay now that i know that you know we're, we're on the same page we, we can do it ton yeah of- i wish i would have done that this year man i totally could have brought some stuff and i how I, did you feel like about i said i didn't turnout? know what to expect i didn't know that many of my folks would be there how did you feel about the turnout it was great it was awesome dude i thought I, it was great I think, it was, it was- I think it was the right amount of people I think we could have added about 30 to 50 more people. We had about 425 people there. I think we could have gone to 450 or 475. You could go to 500. It'd be fine. Okay. I think 500 or less would be the mark. Because when you, yeah. I think when you get over 500, it starts to be a very large crowd. And it starts to get it's unmanageable. kind of hard to handle and deal with. It I think becomes a festival. Less, it, it's big enough that it's an that it's an event. It's exciting. But it's also small enough that it still feels kind of more intimate and not like because you know you go to Blade Show, man. There's thousands of people there. It's like, or you go to Comic Con. You've been to Comic Con. It is like it's overwhelming, bro. Like it's so much. Wow. Um, I think keeping it at like that 500 amount is enough to where it's a big event, but it's small enough to where it still feels nice and everybody can socialize. People can have FaceTime with other people and have time to talk with the people they want to talk to and all that. You get thousands of people, dude, and like you're not going to have time to talk to anybody. It's just too many people because everybody wants to talk. You know what I mean? Yeah, 100%.
Uh, I uh, am always shocked. I think you guys honored. did a great job. Uh, thank you. I'm always shocked and honored when people show up. I mean, we have people from Alaska. We have people from Europe. We have people from California. I mean, it's like, wow, man. Dude, Alaska? There was the 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 the, the guy and his girlfriend there from Alaska? Yeah. There was people great. from, a bunch them. of people from Texas, yeah. Canada. I met multiple people from Canada. Like, it was it was a cool turnout, man. And I, 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 again, I didn't know what to expect, but I really liked the way you guys kind of orchestrated like the cigars with what you had going. So that's why I was, I was talking to Alice on the way down there. I'm like, I don't know what to expect. I mean, there's a bag of cigars supposedly, but he just smoke them at will or whatever. I like the fact that you organized it and you had it like paired up with meals throughout the day and stuff. So you had a Cuban sandwich cigar and you had a Cuban food truck come and was given Cuban sandwiches, right? You had yeah. a cafecito cigar, which by the way, that cafecito cigar was fucking slapped, yeah. clapped cheeks, dude. I don't know what yeah. the fuck that thing was, but it was delicious Good stuff. Um, like, I don't know who rolled it or where, what factory, yeah, yeah, yeah. Had, but it was good. Um, but then you had the little cafecito Cuban coffees that you could have with the cigar, right? You paired meals and beverages and stuff. You had the Pravada uh, whiskey pairing with the Pravada cigar that was aged in the barrel from the bottle. I just thought it was well done. I thought you curated a cool experience with the bag and cigars going along Thank with you. the whole experience. And I thought it was cool. All for 125 bucks. Yeah, dude. I mean, shit, just the fucking bags of cigars and the food was all free. I don't understand how you didn't lose money on that deal. So it's the power of community. These people all basically pool their money together with me and I spend every dime of it on. They, they, they're willing to buy the tickets ahead of time so I know what the budget is. And then we just spend the entire budget. We end up within a thousand. Yeah, but I can't believe you were able to get all that done with that budget. For, for I, that can't, I, I can't. I can't mean, believe it. I can't believe it either because last year we weren't able, the, the first time we weren't able to do it, we had more people the first year, and the tickets were twenty five dollars less, though. So that makes a difference. So four hundred twenty five yeah. people at one hundred and twenty five versus five hundred people at a hundred. I think it's still more, right? Four hundred. We also had non attending tickets, but I did that the first year too and sold about the same. I think it's just math about- ain't mathin', bro. Huh? <laughs> I said the math one- ain't mathin'. I can't. I can't math. On, it's, on the it's the one. It's the one area I really just disappoint myself in. <laughs> uh, dude, like, I disappoint myself regularly. Like I'm man. starting to forget my multiplication tables and shit. Like I'm at the point where I'm like, what's eight times seven? Like, I had to <laughs> yeah. think about it. You so someone like, someone made this comment in a movie. It was like a line from a movie, and it made me feel way worse about not being good at math. And he goes, someone said, I'm not good at math. And he said, you know, it's amazing. No one says that about speaking English. And it's like, you know, like an American, we don't, in other words, you, you can't say that about, about words. You can't say That's not oh, true. I, I say it all the time. I'm horrible I, at speaking. I fuck it up constantly. You should see my edits. It takes me an hour to edit a video because I fuck it up 37 times a take. <laughs> I say all the time I'm horrible in English. <laughs> but it, it just made me feel like, damn, like, yeah, I just didn't, I didn't get a good education when it comes to math. And I just believe that I wasn't taught math the right way. My kid goes to a school where they teach something called Singapore math. Uh huh. I, I I barely know what that is. They basically told me that with Singapore math, they teach them every which way they could possibly come up with something, uh, or like come to the conclusion, that any any formula, and then it's up to the kid which formula they want to use. Whereas other forms of math that you had to use their process, like they don't care as long as your answer's right. I hated when they went to Common Core for a little while. Uh, Common Core drove me crazy, bro. I hated it so much. What Common Core was a, st- a style of math that they taught for a, f- a while here in Florida, in public schools at least. And um, it was just a total new way to like solve a math problem. And not f- first off, I'm like, look, we've been math in the same way for thousands of years. Why we got to come up with a new way to math, right? Like, I don't understand. Right. Like, long division, the way we were taught division in school, right? That's not how they do division, or that, I think they stopped it now, but that's not how they did division when my kids were being taught long division in school. And I'm like, well, but this is how you do long division. And they're like, no, this common core, this is a different way to get to the same answer. And I'm like, well, but why did we need a different way? Like it, the old way wasn't broke. I don't understand. I couldn't help my kids with math because I couldn't, because they had to show their work and I didn't know the way because I wasn't <laughs> taught that way. It was the dumbest shit ever. And well, I think you got, you got chat, chat GPT now, bro. So you're all set. 
dude, it's the, it was the dumbest shit. But um, but Prevalicon was great. Talking to everybody was fantastic. I thought you guys did a great job. It was a cool event. I'd highly recommend anybody if you've got the ex, you've got the money and you got the time and you can get there. Make plans to be at the next one because it's it's a lot of fun. Jeremy, that means the world to me. You're a cool guy and a big time influencer on YouTube, and I just um, I was honored to have you sitting next to me. And I was easy like, on Man. the big time, easy on the big time, <laughs> easy on the influencer, easy on the big time. I think <laughs> I know you hate that on YouTube. I think just saying you're a guy on YouTube is is good enough. Well, you, you are a guy on YouTube, and you're a guy that people trust your opinion on things. And and I and I think all of us know that watch you that you don't just plug something just to plug something. Like if you. No, I, I appreciate you saying that because I and try bro, very hard bro, bro, to make bro. that clear. I'm sitting around having cigars, talking to people. It was a little overwhelming. I want to spend more time with each person, but there's so many people. And every once in a while, I smell something and I go, you know, I have an elevated palate, Jeremy. And I go, you do have an elevated uh, palate. <laughs> I go, is there a fucking gas leak around here? And who, what is it? It's Jeremy's fucking stupid lighter. I hate this thing. I hate it. I can smell it from across. We were outdoors. I could smell it from 10 feet away. How is that not affecting your cigar smoking experience? Come on. Because here's the thing. You smelled it while I'm lighting it. As soon as I close it, that smell is gone like the wind. Within five seconds, it's gone. And it's the same with puffs? the cigar. How many puffs? Two. Okay. Maybe three. Two for me, maybe if you haven't been smoking cigars or drinking whiskey for 50 years and burnt half your taste buds out, maybe four to five puffs. But, like, dude, it goes so very it leaves. Quickly. It leaves the cigar. A hundred. For me, I get zero residual taste within a puff or two. Okay. Usually, well, I, I notice while it. I'm actively puffing and lighting it, and as soon as I take it away, the next draw is clear. For me, I noticed it. And I have a... I have, I would say, a little above average palate, right? Yes, you have I a very can pull notes. I I wouldn't say very good uh, because we got guys like you and stuff that can pull all kinds of craziness out. But I can, I can identify flavors and stuff that some people say. I taste cigar. I taste whiskey. Like I have, you know, been can able I, can to, I, to to. Huh? Can I just can I just jump in there for one sec? I'm sorry. I, I feel like I'm cutting you off today a lot. I probably no go go ahead. Uh, um, I mean, you have um, to. If not, I'll keep talking. <laughs> that there's that too. But uh, <laughs> I I um I, I am 100 percent positive. Most people in my industry think I'm a bullshit artist. I have a lot of members that come up to me and they're like, "These tasting notes are bullshit," but I love the experience. They're not bullshit. Uh-huh. I'm I. The olfactory sense is the only sense that goes directly to the brain without going through other like nerve endings first, right? And so you are reminded of things. That doesn't mean that the average person is going to pick that up and go, oh, wow, that tastes like a fresh cut apple. But if I plant that in your head because I was reminded of it, we're going back right. to that creativity thing, right? I'm My right. creative muscle is so in, in shape that I'm able to have these conversations with myself. Well, what does that remind me of? Okay, it reminds me of this. And then when you read that and smoke it, you go, oh, yeah, I could see that because I also have the memory of eating a fresh-cut Granny Smith apple, and I know what he's talking about with that tang. And when I drew this, there was something in one of my cheeks that made me, yeah. So that's that's the whole thing to that. I, I saw well, a I guy. Think, uh-huh. And I'm sorry to interrupt you, but no. just – I think that's one of the things that I think people misunderstand about notes in a cigar or a whiskey or anything that, you know, people are given flavor notes and nose notes and stuff like that is they think that when you say fresh cut apple, that you should take a puff and it should taste like a fucking Jolly Rancher or something. Right. Right. Or, Or like you just took a bite of an apple and it's not that in your face. Most of the time, most of the time, it's a subtle hint that reminds you of that. Now, there are certain flavors that come through much more bold, and I think people can pick up on much easier. Black pepper, earth, chocolate. To me, those are the flavors that, like, those are a little bit bolder, and I think they're a little closer to the true thing, right? Yeah. But there's a when you get into the nuance shit, it's like little whiffs of this and that, and yeah. it's a lot of it is not only subject to your creativity and your memories of how you're relating 
things to flavor and taste and smell, but it's also your own taste buds, how you react to things. Some people like asparagus, some people don't, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like everybody's palate's different, which is why when people say that, you know, oh, well, that's not that, that's not right. That doesn't taste like this or taste like that. Or they're afraid to give flavor notes because they don't want to sound stupid. I'm like, there's no wrong answer, man. It's a personal experience. If, if you smoke that, you say it tastes like kitty litter. Hey, that's what it tastes like to you, bro. Right. You're not right. right or wrong. Like, right. Nobody knows what's going on in your mouth except for you. So my point well, is, I've heard, I've heard old guys in the industry. It. I heard this one older dude in the industry and he's someone who's very well respected. And, and he's like, I've been smoking 30 years. And let me tell you, I never tasted apple in a fucking cigar. And I'm like, yeah, dude, cause you're fucking boring. And all you, you don't think, <laughs> you don't think you're not using your brain. This is proof that you're not using your fucking brain and you're just sitting yep. there with smoking to smoke for the exercise of smoke. See, what happened was in the, in the seventies, eighties, these guys kept a cigar in their mouth out of habit. It wasn't about a flavor. Right. Half of them were chewing it. Half the time the cigar wasn't lit. Then you get into the nineties where it became jewelry and People, most of the people that smoke cigars didn't even really like it. They were doing it because it was fucking cool and greed was great and all that bullshit. And then you right. get into you get into the 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 the, the boutique the craft which is, errors. Well, the now I era. think the craft era started. I think we really pushed that thing along from like 2015, 17 on. But before that, it was yeah. this what we're calling the boutique movement, which was the heavy metal of cigars, and um, it was cool. They used materials that were looked down upon at one point. Uh, for instance, San Andreas. That was, this was cheap garbage. Uh, we just did a documentary on San Andreas. You couldn't get people to Dude, smoke. It's delicious. It's one of my favorite rappers, bro. San Andreas and Connecticut Broadleaf are two of my favorite rappers. And Connecticut Broadleaf was, was, was not, it, I think it was like used a lot for pipe tobacco. I think it was used a lot for, I mean, backwoods still. The Dude, they're, they're delicious. Both of those rappers are some of my favorites. It, and and by the way, those are the only two actual full on Maduro rappers. Okay, I just want to. I just a lot point, of them. It's like a darker Habano, and people call it a Maduro or something. That's not a just, true Maduro, right? Just want to point that out to everyone out there. That yeah, knows so much. About it gets confusing. Stuff. It honestly does because depending on how they age and cure a rapper, just about any rapper can get dark, right? Just because it's a dark rapper doesn't yes. mean it's you know. Yes, and I think that they um, use coffee grinds and stuff like that to um, to darken too. The the long you can ferment it in a way that will get it darker. Uh, you can put things on the tobacco while it's fermenting. I mean, there, there's a lot of things you can do to try to get it darker. Ultimately, there is a a point uh, where you know it's not going to get any darker, and at that point, you have to assess whether or not you know you want to go jet black. Like a scudo is not a real thing. What is a scudo? It is not a real thing. It's, it means like jet black. That is, I don't know of any strain of tobacco that's act, absolutely jet black without some sort of processing to it. And I'm not saying chemical processing. I'm saying natural process. Because remember, uh-huh. cigars are mostly natural <laughs> process. There was a guy I was calling. I, I didn't call him out. I didn't even have his band on the cigar. He knew what the fucking cigar was just by the cellophane. Okay? That's a problem. When you know what your cigar is just by how what color it turns cellophane, that's an issue. That means that you're processing that cigar in a way that's making that cellophane dark like that. Does it does it make me want to smoke it less? No. Sometimes it makes me want to smoke it more. We all love a good right. cello. <laughs> but but we've seen what cello looks like aged and it's it yellows. It doesn't rust brown like that. Yeah, no. It it definitely gets like a yellowy orangey amber almost kind remember, of color at the older. Re- remember Jeremy, when they're this tobacco has to be moist all the time, okay? Right. And they're using mineral water. So some people attribute not just the soil, but the mineral water from the area. That it's coming from a well. Whatever that water has in it, those those nutrients, that's the minerals. That's fl- that's enhancing the flavor of that tobacco over time of fermentation. Right. Okay. And same thing. Well, same it's same way that like Ometepe tobacco tastes different because of the volcanic soil and all the things and the minerals and the stuff. And that's a very different flavored tobacco than other tobaccos, right? That, I would believe that that comes mostly from the soil. However, um, yeah, you're correct. Their, their aquifier system there is different than it is in Esteli. So they're getting a different mineral water. They're de- getting a different, be- and they're constantly wetting this shit and then and then uh, fermenting it and wetting it again and fermenting it. And then when it's time to roll after they age the tobacco, 
Then they're going to roll it. They wet it again. Well, some in in uh, in uh, Cuba, I heard they used to use uh, fresh squeezed orange in the water. Uh, they use huh. tea. There's all types of natural things. So all of these factories have their own processes that are traditions that have been brought back from the motherland to who knows where. And uh, and some modern things as well. Uh, Dominican Republic, the, it was always that they use some, some, a little bit of wine in the water. Um, you know, there's a million different things that you can say. I don't, you can't confirm this up because no one's going to give you their 11 herbs and spices or whatever. But, you know, um, yeah, like you shouldn't know what, I mean, whatever. I, I don't want to jump on anybody's shit, but like I thought that was really odd that Homeboy was coming at me and I didn't even have a band on the cigar. All I did was show the cellophane. Like, yeah, he's like, purposely. Yeah. Oh, that's my cigar. Fuck you. You're a fucking blubble. Yeah. Jeez. People in the cigar industry are weird. And we've talked about this ad nauseum. Oh, this, this they're podcast. not weird. They're, you know what? I, I came to the conclusion, Jeremy, they're not weird. You know what they are? A lot of them are fucking lazy. They're fucking lazy. <laughs> and they've been getting away with murder for too long. And here I come. I'm willing to work my ass off. And they hate it. They hate it. <laughs> Documentaries podcasts right this that and a third these guys have some of these guys that can't even make a post on the on the internet so yeah yeah it's threatening but guess what man if you do something all you have to do is one thing really well and if you do that thing really well consistently i would ne- never ever disrespect someone what, what the, the the disrespect comes in when when it's like blatant lies and everyone will let you get a lo- away with it because they were lying about one thing and then this guy's like all right let him get away with it because I don't want anyone exposing me. And it's like, dude, fuck all that, man. You make good stuff, make good stuff. <laughs> just, and, just, and and you should be passionate enough to put out cool products all the time, I think. But what do I, again, 100%. if you could be a Padron and basically I have the, like those two things that you do really well and just do them in different sizes and packaging and let one age longer than the other, that's great too. I would never disrespect people like that. And those people aren't coming at me. The weird, the weird people that are that are 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 like really affected by the whole Pravada thing are like, I'm like, well, bro, what do you have to hide? Like, just get to work. Don't worry about me. Do do your thing. If you love this, bring me better products than than some of the stuff you've been putting out. You put out two products a year. I put out five <laughs> products a month. Come on, homie. And these shits, these are bangers. Speaking of great products, can we talk a little bit about AJ Fernandez, the guy who rolled this cigar? Come on. So, look, I hear a lot of people say, oh, too much AJ, Brian, too much AJ. And I'm like, that's like saying too much AJ. There's never too, too much AJ. Too, that's like saying too much Jordan, bro, too much yeah. Jordan. You know what you should you should use? Who's the seventh guy off the bench? You should use him more. Let, let's, yeah. let's get more of him in here. Fuck that. That guy's disappointing. I need number one. Yeah. That's who I want. Dude, All right, I am, I'm pumped up this morning. <laughs> I have never rarely if ever had an aj cigar that i did not love he just does good stuff man the construction he, he does good the things. flavors the whole thing instruction the right. flavors the whole thing man he's he's got it down dude he he does it right and i'm glad he was involved in this process because i don't think we could have pumped out a better cigar so he used a little bit of a uh, colombian tobacco that he had that's what makes i'm excited cigar. about that it- Colombian it's tobacco. Brazilian. So there's, it's mostly a Nicaraguan puro. Yes. With a little bit of a Brazilian leaf in there. No, Colombian. Or sorry, Colombian. Yeah. So Colombia has been little utilized in uh, cigars, mostly because they grow cocaine, not tobacco. However, <laughs> uh, uh uh, Iroa told me, uh, uh, Christian Iroa told me that when he first started his career working for his father, uh, he flew all around the world trying different tobaccos to see what unique things they could bring to the table. And he said that Colombia was above and beyond everything he had tried. It was just extremely hard to get them to grow the tobacco and ship it and everything because they were way out in, in deep into Colombia where there's, there is a lot of, you know, narco trade. It's ironic that Colum- that cocaine grows in those same places. Um, but well, they also grow a lot of really great coffee, right? So, you know, it's all those countries that they grow good coffee, they grow good tobacco that, you know, I mean, it's, it's, so we're talking about, about the climate, the, the soil, what it is, yeah, but they, it, they have good it, things for sure. You're talking about the, the, the bottom of, of central America and the top of South America. These seem to be your great earth growing for 
co- uh, uh, tobacco, uh, uh, coffee, chocolate. This is and the Caribbean. So it is that part yeah. of the world. It, and, and it was probably all connected at one point before, like some fucking meteor smashed shit up or a volcano. <laughs> the the continental yeah. drift and the tectonic yeah. plates and all the yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, it's but yeah, it's it's interesting that all the shit comes from there. Right. So it, it's definitely got to be a combination of the soil, the climate and all that. But um, it's also interesting that the same climate produces stuff that pairs really well together. Right. Like tobacco and coffee. <laughs> right you know what i mean it's like they this, grow in the are, same area it's the same climate and just so happens two of the best things possible to pair together these are my these are my focuses in the next uh you know a couple of years here are coffee and chocolate those are my two things i mean bourbon we're going to do just for our members but coffee and chocolate are are that's what that's that's where i'm i'm headed because they they pair so well with it i'll tell you another thing i like about coffee and chocolate is is I enjoy serving people and I enjoy wowing them with things that I've made. I, I find uh-huh. I take I take great pride in that. And so uh-huh. um, not everyone smokes cigars. And so coffee and chocolate make fantastic gifts. Now, if I can give a family, a, a, an older couple or just a couple, uh, an adult couple, uh, a, a package of cigars, coffee and chocolate. Oh, come on, man. That's cool. Come on, and get even, out of here. Even if he doesn't smoke cigars, he might try. They might they might try that those cigars Dude, too. Those three things together are great. Um yeah. one of my favorite combinations ever is a chocolate covered espresso bean, a cigar, and a Guinness. Wow. Those three things you eat a little chocolate covered espresso bean, take a sip of Guinness, a little puff off your cigar. Those flavors, man, it is it's a magical yeah, we're, experience. We're talking about a porter or a stout as well. Um, it's it's something that that's of interest. Uh because I think we need to we need to the more we the look, I have one job to do here, right? And and that is uh aside from running a company for the culture, my opinion is my job is to bring more new people in. Uh, that doesn't mean necessarily young people, but just new people in. Okay. And the only way that I can, uh, find to like find some common ground with some of these people who, who wouldn't consider smoking a cigar right now is the culinary aspect. If you're a foodie, there's a really good chance you would also be a great cigar smoker. And so I'm going to oh, pull yeah. you in with the coffee, with the chocolate, that kind of thing. And, and, and get you to try it just so you understand how special of a product this is because of all those it- products. This takes the. And it doesn't have to be something you smoke daily like me. It could be something you enjoy once a week or twice a month. And, you know, you have it with a special meal with the night with, you know, I mean, I am a daily cigar smoker, but you don't have to be to enjoy it. I would argue that some people that probably nerd out about it more don't smoke it daily because they really do reserve it for those special times. Sure. Um, so this you know, cigar is a six by fifty four box press Habano. Now, if you notice that Habano is a little darker than usual, it is. So it's a and nice- it's got a little bit. It's certain lights. It also has almost a little bit of that like claro, orangey tint to it in certain lights. So the Colorado is what I think you're saying. Colorado, that's what I said. The, 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 you're oh, seeing fucker. some of the redness. Is that what you're saying? Right. In certain so lights. This, this is indicative of sun-grown tobacco. You're going to get some of that. These are higher priming sun-grown tobacco. Uh, higher priming means higher on the plant. And so it's getting right. more sunlight. It's getting more, um, uh, what's the stuff that they knock people? It's getting more chlorophyll. And, uh-huh. um, uh, and that's chloroform that knocks people out with chloroform, yeah. <laughs> chlorophyll, <laughs> whatever. Chlorophyll's in a plant, chloroform yeah. is knocking people out. <laughs> uh, me and you are both not. I called it a claro. You know why I called it a claro? Because there's a cigar, a Colorado claro, that I really like. In great cigar, cigar. yeah, it was Davidoff. in my head. I, that's that's one of the Colorado. best Davidoffs. That's one of the best Davidoffs. So, Colorado, Davidoff, Colorado describes the, the reddish brown tint. Right. And so, um, yeah, no, it has that, man. It's it's look, AJ uses a lot of higher primings. He's a fuller body American market uh, blender. You know, there's no doubt. It's about delicious, it. man. And yeah. I'll be real curious. I'm excited not only about this release, obviously, but going forward, you know, I told you about the the you know, because you've done you've got some experience with aging cigars and whiskey barrels and I do so much whiskey stuff. And obviously I'm really excited about taking some of these 
aging them in some whiskey barrels that we've kind of got a relationship going with the people at still Austin. They're doing some cool things and we're probably going to do a barrel pick and then do the barrel pick kind of like you did with the Provada club, do the barrel pick, have the whiskey and then age some of these cigars in the barrel then so, have it to where you can pair the 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 and we'll put a secondary band on it called like barrel aged. You'll send. I think me that'll be cool. the, the barrels. The barrels will come here. I'll age the cigars in the barrels. We'll then put the secondary band on when we put it back in the box, and then we put a sticker on the box indicative of whatever barrel that was. And then boom, hey. you got your your barrel aged limited editions whenever you want to send a barrel. Easy. And I think that will be. Super cool. And then down the road to add on, I would love to do a Maduro version like a San Andreas or a, uh, because, you know, it's funny. Somebody asked me the other day, they're like, man, you love dark cigars. How come like you, you, you've done three cigars. Two of them were, uh, or three of them were, this is our fourth. Actually, we did yeah. three with you guys. They were just like picks that we did. Right. Yeah. They, they weren't a full cigar release. Like, this. right. And of those, I've only done one Maduro two Habanos and now I've done a third Habano. They're like, but you always talk about how much you love. I'm like, I do. And I want to come out with a San Andreas or a, a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper cigar at some point, but that is a little more polarizing leaf. I think Habanos, it appeals to a broader audience. And I think you still get a lot of great flavor from it. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do with Habano. There's more flexibility with Habano. And I, Habano, I think that's why we've leaned in Habano several times. H Habano is the most traditional. It's it's the 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 out of Nicaragua, in my opinion, the most flavorful right now. Uh, I think uh -huh. uh, these these Habanos have more flavor than a lot of Maduro cigars do. I think Maduros tend to have sweetness. I think what Maduros really do, okay, and I, I'm sure there's a lot of people that might want to challenge me on this. Um, I think it's uh, very psychological. I think mm. you look at this, it's like dark chocolate. You're like, ooh, dark, deep. Your mind's yeah. already going somewhere first. And so mm. um, these cigars, I won't say they, they uh, are different from other Habanos. Well, they are different from other Habanos. And you have a higher prime in Colorado, really good quality wrapper. And then you have those Esteli fillers with a little bit of this Colombian, which adds a brightness that I, I find it a little hard to describe that brightness. Yeah, they're they're very good, man. I love them. I uh, I've already smoked a half of one of the boxes you sent me because um, I, I was joking last night on the live stream saying Brian said I'm the black hole of cigars. <laughs> um, I, I've been trying to limit myself to one a day uh, because I don't want to. I didn't want to go through them too fast. Um, but I have smoked at least one of them a day. I've gone through about half of the the first box, and uh, they're just great. And so far, I have had zero construction issues on any of them they have been perfect every single one i've smoked so far and that's my thing it's like you know you, you want to try a variety is the spice of life it's 100 i i work we work every single box has if, if if aj will probably be in every other month lca aj will probably be in every two or three months but i have to work them into my rotation often because he's the best the construction's the best the flavors are the best the whole thing like why wouldn't I do that? I can't I can't necessarily put anyone else in that position right now that's going to be as consistent and as unique with each blend. Like it's just it's just not going to well, happen. So, yeah. And everybody rolls a little differently, right? I like the way AJ rolls. The draw that AJ cigars have is my preferred draw. There's some resistance. It's not like sucking through a straw. There's some resistance, but it's on the easier side. 100% there's there's some firmness there. It's not just like straight air because that would be bad. But it is. It's easy to get smoke. It's a nice, pleasant draw. Some people like they roll tighter cigars. Alec Bradley. I've had this discussion with Alec Rubin many times. Their cigars. I'm not saying there's any construction issues. They do fantastic things. But they purposefully like a little tighter draw on a cigar, and they purposely roll their cigars a little tighter. Because that's the way they prefer them. And they say that's the way they experience the most flavor and stuff. And I respect that. To each their own. It's it's a thing. Whatever they want to do. Uh, Romacraft does the same thing. Romacraft, uh, and I just learned this last night because I had a couple of Romacraft cigars that were too tight for me to even get a good air you know, through them. 
And I, one of the guys in the live stream was like, yeah, I've actually spoke with the guy at Romacraft, and they purposely like to roll their cigars a little tighter because they like that particular type of draw. And that's fine. Some people do. If you like a little bit firmer draw, that's cool. I don't. Me, I like the way AJ rolls cigars. Why the hell a would you same thing side. same thing with Padron, perfect draw. Why would you want to why would you want to battle with that? The only thing I could say is you might get a little more nuance out of a cigar with a firmer draw because the smoke's going to be cooler and blah blah blah, but ultimately right. if it's well, that's what enjoyed, they say. If it's not in, but that's I think that's an excuse cuz I've worked out of those factories and and that's the other thing that that's really scares people about fucking me is that I've worked at it mostly every factory except Fuente and my father. Those are the only two factories that I haven't really done a lot of work out of. Um, and I'm I do sure like my some father. Others. I'm, sure, I'm sure someone could write in and go, oh, you never worked it. Yeah, you're right. But like relevant factories, I've pretty much done at least one, if not two or three projects out of them. And right. bro, right, Raices rolls tighter. That's just the way it is. You know, to say that you like it better, I don't think anyone would want any different construction from what's in your box right now. Uh, no one. No, that I is, love them. I is, think they're perfect. Is, I think it's it's the right amount of draw. It doesn't and, take a lot of effort to get a nice thick mouth of smoke. It's not so loose that it just. And I want to say this also in in regards to the AJ thing. A lot of people say, "Oh, uh, they think AJ is cheap because his cigars are less expensive." AJ made those cigars less expensive in his lines because he wanted on everyone. Yeah, he wanted everyone to be able to smoke these things, and he's vertically integrated, so he can do that. But if you talk to Southern Draw, if you talk to probably Foundation, if you talk to any of the brands that he makes out of his factory, they're all selling for 13 to 17 to $20 now because AJ Dude. is probably the most expensive factory you can work out of in Nicaragua. I've said it a million times. I have said it a million times. AJ cigars, bang for the buck, are ridiculous. They're ridiculous. His seven, eight, nine dollar cigars compete all day long with fifteen to seventeen dollar cigars that I've had of other brands. Um, I mean, he just—I don't know how he does it. I don't—I don't know. He told you know, me. He told he me when he met me. He said. He said. You know, basically, in in our broken communication, he was like, "Everyone's talking about you, but now your cigars are going to back that all that shit up now." And he was right. None of these guys can trust me. the The first thing they'd love to do is get on and be like, "This kid's cigars are shit. He doesn't know what the fuck he's talking." But when they try the cigars, they're like, "Oh damn! How did he do that?" Blue Cheese is becoming one of the hottest sellers in shops right now. That is some of AJ's finest tobacco, and my man, people are responding to that when they smoke it. They're like, "Holy shit! What is this?" Well, dude, how can anybody talk shit about AJ when just about every manufacturer in the world has an AJ Fernandez version of their cigar? H. Upman's got an AJ Fernandez cigar. Monte Cristo's got an AJ Fernandez cigar. They've all got an AJ Fernandez cigar. So if he wasn't the shit, why is everybody wanting to work with him? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, he's the shit. He's, he's, he's the goat, bro. He's like the Michael Jordan of cigars. I don't give a fuck yes. what anybody says. Yes. So we're in good I, hands. I tell you somebody else, and, and I did want to say this real quick, uh, because we got one coming up, we I got we got to hang out with Eric Espinoza a little bit at Provodicon. Not only did I enjoy hanging out with him because I think he's a character, and I enjoyed just spending a little time with him. But um, we're gonna do the Laranja in uh, the 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 next series of live streams. I forgot how delicious that cigar is. One of the best that Laranja is so good. It's one of the it's best so cigars good. on the market. Uh, he's got his own factory. He also works with AJ. And he also makes incredible cigars. He gets a flavor out of La Zona that no one else gets. Eric is a, 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 a gem. He is a hidden treasure in this industry. And his time is now coming. The thing that he did with Knuckle Sandwich and um, Guy Fieri is really helping project how good his cigars are, how amazing of a character he is, how good he is for cigar culture. Eric Espinosa is, without him, I don't think Provada will be where it is today. And he's also one of the few people that have gotten those pressure calls. Don't work with Brian. Don't work with Pravada. We don't like it. And he said, fuck you every single time and continue to work with me. So hopefully that continues and we can continue a he was a relationship together. He was a fun guy to hang out with. I enjoyed meeting him and talking to him. And, you know, it's funny. I was telling him that the 601, I think it's called the six, the blue. I think it's the 601. It's the one with the blue and the gold label. I was like, you know, I did the 601 in a live stream, and it was a 
very good cigar. And a lot of people really enjoyed it. He goes, oh, yeah, that's one of our best sellers, 100%. And I asked him, I said, man, but what is your favorite cigar? Like, what's yours? And he pulled it out of his pocket. He had some in his pocket. He gave it to me. He's like this. And it was that new Laranja. And I don't know if there's anything different in the blend with the, no. the one that's like, I sent you the text we were talking it's about. It's size. anniversary edition. Yeah. This is a special size. Um, but I, I knew I liked Laranja because I had some in the past. But um, I hadn't smoked one in a while. And then the one he gave me, when I got home the next day, I smoked it. And I was like, I immediately called you or Eddie. I can't remember. And I was like, we need Laranja in the next live stream. I forgot how fucking great this cigar is. It is such a good cigar. Such it's a really good cigar. cigar and, and, and such a great guy. Like I, I'm, That's a Habano, isn't it? It's a Habano, oh, Habano yeah. wrapper, isn't it? Yeah, that's a yeah. Brazilian, Brazilian Habano wrapper. Um, I have multiple variations of that cigar where he tried to make it without that wrapper because it's really hard to get, and he wasn't uh, comfortable putting them out, so he sold them to me, and I've done multiple things with them, and they've all been fantastic. I think he's a little critical on that, but nonetheless, that that cigar is fantastic. He's one of great. the best people in this industry, and I'm just proud to be affiliated with him, even loosely. And so, um, uh, uh, so that's... The thing with Pravadakan, though, I do want to mention this, is Pravadakan uh-huh. is supposed to be where you sit down with me and have a cigar. You sit down with Eric Espinosa. You sit down next to Jeremy Sires. You don't even know sometimes that you're sitting next to a factory owner or a farm owner. You're getting ingrained in the culture. These people will become your friends over time. It's different than going to a place yeah. where they stand at a booth and hand you a free cigar. That's not Pravada. Right. No, it was. It was very, everybody was just sitting around on all the couches. Everybody was hanging out. There's a couple times I was sitting there smoking with somebody and I didn't realize they're like, oh yeah, I'm with this cigar cover. I'm like, oh shit, hey man, I love your shit. I didn't even know, <laughs> you know, they were sitting there having a cigar hanging out. Um, it was it was a really cool experience. But the the thing I wanted to say because I know we're probably getting close to our time limit, but I wanted to make sure we went over this before. So with this cigar release, we are dropping it to the LCAs first, right? That's the plan. Yes. And we're going to give them exclusivity for how long before it's available on the website? Two weeks. Two weeks. So for the first two weeks, it's going to be LCAs only. And you have a LCA search, because we were talking about this on a live stream, and I told everybody yep. uh, I'd get uh, clarification on all this today when we had our thing. For the first two weeks, it's LCAs only. You have it, and people were asking, some of the people strangely in my live stream, I didn't realize, didn't know what the LCAs were. And I've done videos on it. I've talked about it many times in the past, but I re-educated some people last night and explained what the uh, Limited Cigar Association all that was. But um, you. it's basically your effort to keep pushing people to buy at brick and mortars and, and support local business because, you know, there's there's something special. It's a big part of the industry. There's something special about having that face to face interaction with your local tobacconist and sitting down. Most places have a little lounge in their store. You can sit, have a cigar, socialize with people. It's a big part of the culture, and you didn't want that to die with the internet taking over sales so much. So you created this limited cigar association, uh, and you send so out ha- special cigars too. I'm so happy that 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 to hear that out of your mouth. That is exactly 100 percent the truth. We we we. No other online retailer would ever even consider doing something like that until they saw us do it uh, because now they see dollar signs. But the truth of the matter is, is without brick and mortar, cigar culture will perish. Um, uh, right. It will be. You can't do even, anything. Yeah. Yeah. You can't, you can't and, do anything and, 100% and, online except for porn. And I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 all, I'm all about taking 10% of something rather than, uh, you know, 100% of nothing. So I'm right. willing to share my audience with these brick and mortar shops. And in the beginning, these guys would walk in and they'd be like, yo, Brian, this is why I don't go to shops. These people were assholes. We've had those uncomfortable conversations. Some of them warmed up. Some of them left the, the LCA. Ultimately, we're left with about close to 500 shops. Sometimes we go over uh, 500 shops um, that are good. Uh, they're local brick and mortars. They're mom and pop shops. And they appreciate you coming in and asking for the LCA. If they're hiding the LCA, please tell them to put them in a, in a better spot. But, you know, no one else is sharing their audience with brick and mortar the way we are. And even these guys that have made a whole living off of um, brick and mortar, uh, they they still don't promote these places. It's impossible for them to promote each individual place. So we found a way to do that. And I'm lucky that the idea came to me. Now, why are we releasing it in the in the LCAs first? Well, 
my thing is to add value to you and it's to add value to them. And so the way I can best add value to both of you is I can get you in, introduced to them on a product level. Jeremy Sires cigars sell out fast because they're part of the LCA. You got to get them where right. you can. And so now your brand will do well and have a good relationship with these 500 shops and uh, the 500 shops will like you and they'll benefit from your audience coming in. And it's just really good juju for everyone. And so- No, I feel after, it. Yeah, after the- And you time, have a, and you have an LCA finder on your website, right? Yeah. Yeah, you just click LCA and it'll bring you to a map. Because people were asking about, they're like, well, how do I know where my local shop is that's in the LCA? And I said, well, go to their website. There's a picker on there. Somebody had mentioned it in the live stream, actually. They said, no, they got a LCA finder on their website. So they just go in there, they type in their zip code or whatever, and it pulls up the shops and just like any search does for when you're looking for a place. Like if you go to fucking Home Depot and you're looking for Home Depots in my area, you know, you pop in your zip code, it pulls up the ones in, in your area. And, and and the best thing you can do is if you don't have an LCA near you, but you do know of a cigar shop, you can call them and tell them, hey man, I'd appreciate it if you got involved in the LCA, I'd come in more often and I'd buy more stuff there. And they can get right. Clark's info, which is Clark at ProvadaCigarClub.com and email him and he'll hook them up. So we're dropping it to the LCAs. We're going to give them a couple of weeks of exclusivity. So definitely everybody, you know, page, like I said last night on the live stream, make sure you patronize, support local business, all that good stuff. Go check out the LCAs. And then we'll be dropping it on the Provada website after that so uh, we're for, doing, for full we're, launch. When are we going to do the, uh, the, the LCA launch? So we're okay. That's what I'm looking at now. First Friday is May the third, so that that the third it's going to go out in the L- with the LCA orders in boxes. Okay, every shop's going to get uh, two boxes, and then we're looking at uh, the seventeenth. We'll be able to go live on the website Friday the seventeenth. We'll we'll go live. So the third the third that is when they're shipping out, or when the LCAs will actually have them. They'll have them. Okay, they'll have them. Okay, so I'll make sure we. You know, get all of our um, social media pictures and video and all that. I'll make sure we have all that together for the launch before the third. And I'll be, you know, pumping it and talking about it and, and getting everybody ready for it and stuff leading up to that. So it's not just like a, a, a just smack people in the face. It's here. Like, like you want to kind of create a little hype around it, you know, let people know, get people excited about the release and stuff. So we'll be talking about it over the next several weeks leading up okay. to getting some promotional material ready, you know, getting all the the videos shot, the photos and stuff like that. And right. uh, get ready for the launch, man. I'm excited about it, dude. Me I think too. it's going to be good. It's, it's going to be incredible. Are you kidding me? You're, the boxes you're, look amazing, by the way. They, they came out great. That was your design. Um, our printer did a really good job of making it come to life um, and translated it. Has it got a little uh, magnet in the lid? Yeah. Because it, it pops closed. I like that. Yep. It's like, yep. Boop. Boop. yep. And honestly, I like that we went with like a hard uh, cardboard paper type box yep. over the wood. A, the wood is, um, not to sound like a hippie, but, you know, you're going through a lot of wood for no reason and it just goes in the fucking trash. And, you know, and we then have to turn that price over to the person because it costs more to produce boxes then we've got to add cost to the cigars which is unnecessary it's kind of wasteful i always just throw boxes away you can only do so much with cigar boxes then you have cigar boxes everywhere a hundred percent and the guys who make cigar boxes in our industry are so in demand that it's impossible you you then just slow yourself down working with these people yeah and they, they it's recyclable they, yeah, they don't impart that much flavor into the unless you're aging it in there for a year with and then you could put no. cedar in here, no problem. You'd still get it. Yeah, no. I like AJ does most of his stuff in paper. Uh except for some of his higher end stuff. But like the whole New World series is all in paper. It's cardboard. I guess I don't know. It's some kind of, you know, whatever it is. But uh I actually prefer it. I feel better about it. Like I said, I throw it in the recycle when I'm done. I feel good about it. It still protects the cigars. It still looks nice. You can do all the pretty stuff. It's got the nice little magnetic closure. That's my face. You're rubbing my face. Your mustache has curls in it that raise up above the... It has, it has a little relief. It's got a little relief. <laughs> That's right here. Right here. <laughs> That's what I was joking around about. I've thought about cutting my beard many times just uh-huh. not off completely but yeah, like yeah, much yeah. shorter yeah. you know just 
because like when I shoot guns and stuff, it's always getting caught up on my butt stock and pulling and stuff. And it, it does get in the way quite a bit. And somebody asked the other day, why I always keep it tied up. And I'm like, cause keep it out of the fucking way, man. When it's loose, it flies around everywhere. It's annoying. Um, and I was like, I can't ever cut my beard now, man. I've got too much branding in it. I have to like fucking get <laughs> off my logo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we'll, we'll love you without the beard with or without the beard. So I, I, I'm, 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 uh, I'm very excited. I, thank you again for coming to Provoticon. Thanks to Allison. She was a pleasure. My wife's enjoyed talking to her so much. We had a great time. Oh yeah. It was a good time. It was a great good time, man. To I can't come. Wait. We, we gotta, we talked about this many times. We gotta hang out more, man. We, you're close enough that it's crazy that we don't do more face to face stuff. Yeah. Definitely when the launch comes, I'm going to have to drive my ass down there and do something. We're going to have to do some face to face stuff around. Oh, we'll launch come time. up there we'll, or we can come either up way. Too. I told you, I, you guys I, come up here. I'll cook to, you, man. We would love we'll cook to you some. I'll do some barbecue or some, you know, dude. My wife, uh, she did a pretty good job. She tried to emulate the Cuban sandwiches that you had at at Provoticon. She she found this recipe for like Cuban pork and she did it and it was did the shredded pork and we put the shredded pork with the ham and the cheese and we pressed was it, it and stuff. We had them last night. They were very good. Very, I mean, very respectable. I think any. Like hardcore Cuban sandwich lover or Cuban would would have thought it was a respectable Cuban. It was very good. I, I, I did I didn't know how much I love Cuban sandwiches until I found that Cuban sandwich shop and uh, I, I have a. Video Is it because they do it the up. real way with real pork, not that bullshit deli meat pork stuff? It's not the way it's supposed to be done, man. Yeah, Friday Friday we're dropping a video on the Cuban sandwich cigar and the, and the, the 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 actual sandwich and everything. So um, that's gonna be cool, man. Listen, I'm excited. May third, it drops. Uh, I'm getting ready. I'd say in a week from now, uh, I'll be sending you a folder with some uh, marketing materials. If you could share any video or footage you take with us in the same absolutely drive, we'll get you access, 100%. that would be great. And then Clark can start really prepping the shops. And if you're out there and you're a member or you, you go to LCA shops, or even if you don't, please call a local LCA shop and ask them if they have the Jeremy Sires, annoy them so that they pick it up and put it out. And, you know, something I think would be fun to talk about real quick before we wrap it up, because we talked about, like, including people in this so they could kind of see part of the planning process. We've gone a little light on it. We didn't get too deep, but I think we've talked, we hit on some of it. But what, and you would know this more than me, what are we allowed to do on social media these days, like with Instagram, per se? Am I allowed to on Instagram, and I don't recall because I haven't done it in a while, Am I allowed to put footage of the cigar launch with a link directly to Bravada on like a story in Instagram? I don't think so. No. So you can't how link, does that because that's what we did in the you, past. Whenever I would drop a, years ago before they got strict about it, I would just do like I do any of my other products. Like I do my Zippos when I drop them, or my cigar scissors when I drop them. Well, I would do said, Instagram stories. William said that you can link to the LCA locator, but you cannot link to tobacco products. So I could link to my website, and on my website, I could link directly to the cigar. I could make a page for the cigar drop, link directly to my website, and then on my page I make, there's a button you click, and it takes you over to Pravada, to the to the page where they could buy it. So but I cannot public- link... Cigar Public will also be doing an article on it. There will be other places that we can link them to, too, that will take them eventually to to the uh, to the page. You know, it's so funny that social media has taken something that is a perfectly legal in the in America adult hobby. I'm going to call it a hobby. Some people get mad when I call it a hobby, but I, I look at it as a hobby because some people really nerd out about it. Yeah. Um, and they've demonized it in such a way. They've done the same thing with firearms, right? Perfectly legal. Firearms, it's actually a constitutionally protected right. And social media has done such a good job at demonizing these things that now it would be easier to advertise for selling heroin than it is for selling cigars or guns. And that's crazy to me. Yeah. That is crazy to me that they've turned it into such a bad thing. And it's like, so, look, they're like, yeah. yeah, but you can't push tobacco on children. Who's pushing tobacco on children? How many kids do you know? How many people under the age of 20-something do you know that are spending $10, $15 on a cigar? Kids are every, worried every, about cigars, bro. 
every view that you see me get anywhere has been so earned double time because I am not in the algorithm at all. They will not put me in the algorithm. My videos will stay in the algorithm for about 24 hours before they are sunk to a bottom of a black hole of cigar content. Yeah. Um, I have been reported so many times. It's insane. The competition has really gone out of their way to try to shut my pages down. And honestly, I kind of thumb my nose at them, but it hurt. It, there's no doubt it hurt, man. Um, we make all this beautiful content and, you, you know, the views are there, but man, those are our customers. Like I was, I was looking forward to growing that over time and it doesn't seem like that's going to happen per se. So I'm working on all types. We have a new videos tab on our website where if you click the videos, it'll show you a video that we made and it'll give you the three products that are in that video underneath it. We're hosting those on Vimeo. We get better video quality out of it and embed it on our website. And, you know, like we're trying different things and new things. And unfortunately, you know, social media hates tobacco. So I always recommend that whatever you do to promote this, uh, make sure it's not linking to tobacco. And um, I don't even know. I, I like subliminal marketing better. I'd rather see you get out there and be like, hey, guys, guess what? I just released something new. Go to my website right now and check it out. I'm going to your website to check that out. I'm more curious now. You know what I mean? So there's other ways to, and, and I, I, in other words, what I'm saying is I think that the, uh, the same way that Cuban tobacco is like the forbidden fruit, so too cigars can be like that too, where it's like, ooh, it's cigars, you know? I mean, sure. And, you know, that's making lemonade out of lemons, right? And I agree. You got to adapt, overcome, and do what you got to do. But it still frustrates the shit out of me that they have demonized it in such a way Meanwhile, they will promote uh, mutilation of uh, children's genitals. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, come on, bro. Like, what are we doing? We're giving fucking kids puberty blockers, and we, we, but we have a problem with a constitutionally protected right and fucking cigars. Like, get out of here, bro. Get out of here. Preach on, brother. Preach on. It's just super aggravating. It's really it's, fucking it's aggravating. Lack of, it's lack of education. It's lack of research. Cigars are not bad for you. I'm sorry. Like, I've been doing this for, I don't know, seven years now, six years. And uh, I've met people that have been doing it their whole lives. They've been smoking three and four cigars a day since they were 12. And now they smoke nine and ten cigars a day. They live in smoke. They literally bathe in the shit. Natural tobacco apparently is not really that bad for you. So long as you don't inhale it constantly. And that's what people right. don't realize. You're not inhaling cigars. And if you have good filtration or you're smoking in a big enough space, you're not going to constantly breathe in that tobacco. And it's not doing the same thing. We've talked about it a million times. When I smoke cigarettes, I felt terrible. Other people get chest pains and all that. Like, this is not that. We're not adding chemicals to this. This is an actual natural product that is meant to relax you and enjoy like flavors and stuff. And it's not addictive even. I don't want to go a night without sitting with my wife and having a cigar at the end of the night. I don't want to, I'm not saying I, I want to not do that. I'm saying that if I don't, if I can't, then I can't. It's not like when I have smoked cigarettes. No, I'm it's, it's it. definitely different. And and I'm not trying to make any health claims because I don't want to get in trouble and, and people say that we're miss saying things. We're not doctors and blah, blah, blah. And I'm not trying to say all that. I can only give you my personal experience. My personal experience is when I smoked cigarettes for years when I woke up in the morning, I would hack and cough. I would get out of breath very easily. There was a lot of stuff that would go on. I would get sick more often. There was a lot of things that smoking cigarettes, I could tell they were affecting my health. I smoke cigars every day. I breathe fine. I don't huff and puff going up steps. I don't cough in the morning when I get up. I don't have any of the problems I had when I was a cigarette smoker being a cigar smoker. Also, it... I don't have the pull to smoke cigars. When I was smoking cigarettes and I was at work, I was down taking a cigarette break every few hours. Two or three hours was my max. And I was like, I need to go have a fucking cigarette. Yep. Like it had a pull. It pulled me. I smoke several cigars a day because I enjoy it. But there's been times that I had to go days without cigars. Like when I got my wisdom teeth out, um, if I'm just busy and I can't do stuff, and you're fine, whatever. I'm fine. I'm fine. Do I want to smoke one? Yeah. I'm like, man, I'd love to have a cigar right now, but it doesn't affect me the way when I couldn't have a cigarette, I was like, yo, bro, like I need to go outside and get a smoke, man. I'm fucking itching over here, bro. I got the monkey on my back, man. Like it's not the same thing. And again, I'm not making any medical claims. I am not a licensed what physician. A product, I'm huh? not pushing anything. I can only give my personal experience. And that has been my personal experience. 
what what a product though c- cigarettes you literally it's like drugs you like hook people. oh dude it's like crack bro quitting it's- cigarettes was one of the hardest things i've ever done and i quit opiates and people can't quit. you know opiates. what else is just as bad and you'll probably you may or may not guess what i'm gonna say i i got you i give you 50 50 i would say just as, just as bad as just just as bad and just as addictive coffee no no coffee because coffee's not bad for you just as bad for you and just as addictive tell me fast food Oh yeah, yeah. No, you're you're. It's killing this country. It's it's killing. It's killing culture. this country. And and dude, they've 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 they found the fucking connection. The salty, the crunchy, all the things that hit all the fucking sensors in your brain to make you want more and eat more and da da da. And it is killing people just as fast as cigarettes, bro. McDonald's. I I don't know how you're allowed to fucking advertise for McDonald's on on the internet. And you're not, and you're not allowed to advertise for fucking tobacco. Because let me tell you something. I guarantee McDonald's is killing motherfuckers way faster than cigars. I could not agree more, man. <laughs> I, I think we're going to end it right there. That's McDon- it. McDonald's is killing more people than cigars. Um, I guarantee you it is. We got to we gotta, we gotta figure out. Uh, 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 I'm going to get sued by McDonald's now. We got to figure out, um, you know, we have to pivot somehow. You know, I, yeah. I tried to create uh, social.cigarpublic and Cigar Public to give people a place that was safe to just go and talk about cigars and not get censored. Um, it's really hard to pull people off of social media. Social media is also crack cocaine. These reels well, dude, are, they d- make you dumb. I, I sit, I, 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 my experience with my phone has no longer been the same since YouTube switched their algorithm to reels. I, 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 I get caught in a real wave. I call it like a wave. And, and it's a black black I come to conscious, I'm like, I literally, I throw my phone down. I'm like, get the fuck away from me, man. I don't want this anymore. You know, you're, you get trapped. You get trapped. And these kids don't have that discipline to throw the phone. Or they're just trapped. Somebody told me the other day, and I hope this is true, that they are, are very secure in the thought that this short form social media is a fad and it is on the decline. Like it has hit its peak and then the pendulum is going to swing back because a lot of people are now saying what you just said and what I've said in some videos recently that short form social media is not a good thing. It's just not. It sucks you into this time warp and it's addictive and weird. And it's, it's, it's unlike long form content that's relaxing and you're sitting and usually long form content has some kind of entertainment value or some kind of informational value. Short form stuff is just, Dopamine hit, dopamine hit, dopamine hit. Next, next, next. And it, I think it encourages you. ADHD. Just you just explained it. You just explained it. Yeah. You 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 could it's, so so YouTube was creating authorities on subjects. That's right. what was happening. I was an authority on cigars. You were an authority on man shit, right? right. Beard oil, guns, stuff like that. Uh 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 the guy that you love that all, all the YouTubers love, McKenny. Peter McKinnon. Peter McKinnon was was a, an authority on just cool stuff, but more than he that. He was a photographer. Was photography. He started off as a photographer. Yeah. He was that's, that's his, his main, thing is like everyone looks at him for his technique and stuff. And 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 you're creating and that's that's where e commerce can can fall. Look at Kirby Allison. Somehow this guy's still going. His views are not slowing down, they're speeding up. I don't know how that's possible in this uh day and age, but I love what he does. He does cigars uh, as a side thing, but he's all about this like gentlemanly, like old timey, you know, bespoke suits. He's in London all the time. That's really cool. And I love the products on his website. They're very expensive ties and and tie clips, stuff that I don't necessarily buy, but I like to look at. And sometimes and if I do need a tie, I'm probably going to buy one from him next time. Um, You know, and that's that's really cool. So he became this authority in that. And that's what was the cream was rising to the top with long form content. Authority right. figures who knew good information could get up if they were able to communicate that information. They could rise above the crowd. With this, this is just an entertainment. That's it. It's just garbage, quick dopamine hits, man. Boom, 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 boom. And uh, yeah, so anyway, point is, I feel like a lot of people are seeing the negative sides of it and it's the pendulum is going to start to swing the other way. And hopefully if all goes well, five years from now, it'll be dead in the water and we so. won't, 
it'll be a fad that blew through and it's done because I really, I do very little on, I don't even have TikTok on my phone. I think TikTok's the. I hate TikTok so much, man. Um, And, and maybe that's just a sign of our, of our age. Hey, it is what it is. But, but let me tell you something. My wife sent me something the other day. She, oh, I just read this. These, this is this woman's list. She's had multiple viral, uh, shorts. And this is her list of, of prerequisite things that all her viral hits shared in common. And I read it and I said, man, I don't want to make things like this. No. And that's the thing is, is in, in, in a big part of my content has always been to my detriment because I could potentially have have, you know, I'm, I'm creeping up on 600,000 subscribers right now. I think I'm at 580 and some change, which I mean, I'm not. I'm not uh, downplaying. I, I'm extremely huge, grat- huge. grateful and, and 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 happy that I've been able to have the success that I've been able to have on YouTube, and it's it's been fantastic. But I I probably could have gotten bigger faster had I gone another route with certain things. But my thing was always to do the content that I was passionate about, whether or not it was successful or not. Perfect example. Lately, I've been doing this overlanding stuff because I've been big into it and I think it's cool and I enjoy it. It's encouraging people to get out fucking side and spend a little time outdoors, get some sun and stuff. So I've been, you know, tap dancing in that and doing a little more of that lately. It doesn't get the best views. It doesn't. It's not the best performing videos on my channel. It's probably some of the least performing videos on my channel. That's what makes you authentic. But I'm not going to stop doing it because I enjoy it. I think it's cool and I'm going to keep doing it. Now, am I going to switch my channel to an overlanding channel and do only that? Of course not, Um, because then the channel would wither and die. But I don't put out videos based on a lot of these people. It's all about what can go viral. What can I do that's going to go viral? And I'm not interested in doing it. I'm not interested if it has any benefit to the person watching. I'm not interested in anything other than it going viral. That is the sole purpose of their videos is to go viral. I don't even look at that aspect. I look at whatever I think is cool, whatever I think I enjoy, so it could possibly put some benefit across to my people that follow me, and I do it. If it goes viral, great. Do I have videos that have hit multi millions. Great. I also have videos that do twenty thousand. I don't care. You, you, <laughs> you know YouTube, what I mean? It's- YouTube was on the right track, and hopefully they can come back. I don't know if they ever will, but I, I, it, it, anything's possible. But man, it was it it was becoming a place where people were sharing a lot of information on things that they were, that they were professionals in or, or pro amateurs in. And, um, that was really cool. Or at least they were passionate about it. Right now. Exactly. Now my feed is all either mafia stuff or, um, um, uh, 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 these like, I don't know, I get pushed a lot of shit, but then I click over to Reels by accident, or sometimes I open my app and it opens automatically to Reels, which tells you what they're pushing. And it's just like, huh? Oh, uh, 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 and then I'm like, what the fuck? I'm an idiot. And I throw my phone away. Yeah, that, that's, that's Reels. It turns you into a moron. I think we'll get away from it. I do think YouTube will survive it. Um, it's too I mean, it's Google, for God's sake. YouTube is Google. Right. Like it's one of the biggest co- companies on the planet. Like I, I, I think they'll adapt. I think they, you know, cause they didn't do shorts for a long time. I think they just try to adapt with what the current trends are. And they saw TikTok make it a big hit and they're like, yeah, let's do that too. But I think as TikTok dies off, I mean, shit, dude, I've seen some stuff in the news. They're, they're looking at ways to try to outlaw TikTok and shit because of some of the stuff that, that's going on with that. Um, you know, being a Chinese company and a lot of sketchy How stuff going on there. How fucked up is that? How fucked up is yeah. that, that you're allowing a communist country that wants to compete with us and take all our information to brainwash our youth? Come on. Man. Yep. What are we doing it's here? weird. It's a weird world, man. Bro, and, 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 and really all this thing is saying is you better sell it to your, your cousin with an American visa. That's really all they're <laughs> saying is we just don't want you to own it, but it's still going to be owned by them. And it's like, you just get rid of this shit, man. I, listen, the First Amendment is a flimsy fucking amendment for today's time. It didn't know that the fucking uh, internet would be a thing. And so we have to we have to adapt a little bit. I'm not saying, uh, you know, you shouldn't be able to say uh, what you what you want legally. But you, I don't know, man. I don't know. 
Uh, but listen, you should definitely to... make sure there's not foreign interests doing negative stuff on the back end. You freedom of speech is like one of the pillars of our our whole ethos, right? And I think people should have freedom of speech and be able to say what they want and all that. But if you've got a giant company that is foreign owned that is potentially doing shady shit to try to corrupt the country. I don't know, man. I'm not saying it is or it isn't. I don't want to get all conspiracy theory, but I'm just saying we probably should take a real close look at that and make sure there's not fucking weird stuff going on because uh, there's definitely some other countries out there that are not fans of America and would like to do us harm. Yeah. I, I wish that uh, X uh, would be working out better for Mr. Musk. Um, I think that it's got some major flaws with, with hate stuff, but I also think it's it's... I think it's honest right now, but the thing with honest, it's honest is, but, you know, to me, honest Twitter doesn't, has always been, it doesn't work. Honest doesn't been, work. It's just, I, no, I mean, I like what Elon Musk has done, and I like the fact that he opened up and said, fuck it, we're not going to ban people because we don't agree with their political agendas and whatnot. But to me, Twitter's just always been like, who gives a fuck? Like, it's just a bunch of people talking shit. You know what I mean? There's no real value there. Like, what's the value of it? Like, I don't, I don't, like I said, YouTube has taught me, I learned how to run my business on YouTube. I didn't know dick all about editing or cameras or any of this shit. And I learned everything on YouTube. I yep. was self-taught because people that knew it got on YouTube, made videos about it, and I learned it. That to now, me now is you're telling that is me beneficial. You, you make me the CEO or the, the chief marketing officer or creative director over at YouTube, and I'll make that company profitable. That's the other fucking. But you know what I'm saying? It's, but YouTube, when it started and still to this day, if you want to learn how to do something, what do you do? You go on YouTube and go, how to change my oil, how to fucking iron a shirt, how to boil an egg, whatever. It's informational. What does Twitter do? And I'm not picking on Elon Musk because I'm glad he took it over and he's making it because they were doing crazy shit over there and censoring stuff. But like, Twitter's really just for people to talk shit. I mean, it's just people. Blah, 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 blah. Let me tell the world what I think. Who gives a fuck what you think? Who gives like, a fuck what you think? What do you know? That's what I want to know. Right? Yeah. I just I don't yeah. I don't understand the 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 pull behind Twitter, and maybe that's me being ignorant because I've never been big on the platform. No, no, you, we, right. we're not we're not Twitter folks. There are some people that are Twitter folks. I think Twitter is more of a form of entertainment than anything else. Uh, there was an old expression that uh, uh, I think. Facebook was uh, where you go uh, to to see people you know, and and Twitter was where you go to hear about people that you know you, you celebrities and stuff like that. It's weird. My light just went off. I just had my battery die on my backlight. All right, all right. Well, I'll let you go, man. Thank you so much for taking the time. Um, this will be up in a couple of days, and uh, I love you, bro. Anything you need, I'm here, and uh, these are pretty much all boxed up and ready to go. So. We'll, we'll both be taking some footage over the next couple of weeks, sharing that, and then releasing it all on the internet for Mayhem on May 3rd. I love you too, my brother. I am excited. I think it's going to be great. I appreciate you uh, taking ownership of this and allowing this to become a thing because without you, this this wouldn't be a thing. You know what I mean? So, you, so you, you've you had the reins and you have the connections with the factories and the tobaccos and the, and the infrastructure. So without you, this would not have been uh, well, I'm sure you could have done this with a with a million other companies. So I appreciate you doing it with Pravada. Uh, no, man, you know I'm I'm a and, and I don't make any. Uh, and I've said this openly to multiple people because I try to be as transparent as possible. Like I, me and Brian are buddies. Like I consider Brian a very close friend. Yeah. So like, um, you know, I don't want people to. Uh, I don't want people to. I want people to know there is a little bit of bias there. <laughs> You know what I mean? I don't want to try to like downplay that and be like, no, me and I, I, there's a little bias there. I love you guys. I think you guys are good for the industry. You've always been good to me. We both started at a very similar point in our careers and, and the two companies have kind of done well yeah. at the same time, kind of uh, in parallel. So it's just been great. I enjoy our relationship. I Some things think work. It's organic. It, it's organic. And, yeah. and I think that that comes out that, you know, you and I are the same in that sense is, it has to be organic. I can't. When my wife gave me that list, I said, I can't do this. And I and I was right. so conflicted because I was like, well, you know who else? You know who couldn't do social media? All the guys that came before me. They said, I can't. They Their wife said, you better get on social media. They said, I can't do this. Well, 
you know what? That's that was their decision to make. But I can't do something that's not no. that doesn't come naturally, and that I don't believe in. And and I think you're the same way. And you dealt with a bunch of other I- cigar companies, and in the end. You landed with us because our values coincide with each other. We're yep. here for the real deal. And, uh, yeah. And I tried to work with the other cigar companies because I wanted, I try to be fair and I try to give people, I don't want to be too biased in one direction because I want to be able to, okay, here, here's all the stuff. I feel like part of my job as what I do on YouTube is giving people options and giving people a fair comparison of what's across the board. So I did try to work with multiple cigar companies and I did. And I had varying degrees of uh, enjoyment with that relationship, sure. but none. Hey, the Bradleys, or, or, the, I, I never hear you say anything bad about the Bradleys. You had a great time uh, working and talking no, to them. No, I still enjoy yeah. I, mean, I haven't talked to Alec in, in months, but I mean, I didn't have any bad stuff with that. But there was a couple other cigar club slash um, uh, manufacturer. I don't know what you would call them in the space, but yeah. that I worked with that... Um, like I said, it wasn't. I have no ill feelings toward any of them. No, it just wasn't a fit. It wasn't a fit. It wasn't a fit. It didn't feel right. I didn't enjoy working with them as much. So at the end of the day, I, I tried to keep my my net as wide as possible to give people a fair spread. But at the end of the day, I'm going to always come back to the one that I enjoy working with the most, and that's always been Provada. So it is what it is. Well, we're you know lucky I mean? then. So thank you very much. We'll take it. <laughs> well, thank you for being you. I got, I got two jackets coming your way, and uh, I'll be in touch with you over the next couple of days. 